Okay, so this video is a reply to Prepper Nurse One's question. Uh, so, what are your thoughts about the electrical issue in the West or uh, the potential for grid failure? EMP was the tangent, but I gotta say, there's actually a lot going on, and I, I think I'm gonna have to go to notes to really uh, make sure I hit all these points. So, first off um it's a global issue right now um there's a global drought which is also impacting the situation right now um so china is rationing its electrical supply the u.s states like texas and california are asking people to conserve um and droughts are drying up reservoirs uh in brazil taiwan um and in the united states also um so well, I'll get into a couple a couple explanations on this. So at this time of the year, hydropower generation is actually at its highest. Like it's coming from that because uh, all the snow melts normally uh, fill the reservoirs and they provide for a lot of excess water capacity that fuels the hydropower plants. But unfortunately, the, Unfortunately, the uh, melts aren't happening, and uh, as a result, the reservoirs are low. So we have historic low levels at uh, Lake Mead, which is the Hoover Dam, and everything downstream from that, um, yeah, downstream, uh, is also being affected. So in, in California, there's... Uh, uh, it's actually power, the hydropower plants supply about 13% of the electrical capacity, which is actually quite a large amount. If you think about all the power that California uses, um, it, it's a major, it, it, like a lot of the other states are putting power into California normally. They send their power to California. But uh, California gets 13% of their power. Um, if you're talking about only a drop in a few percent to cause an outage, um, that 13% is very relevant. Um, so right now, the Hoover Dam, for instance, is, uh, I, I believe it's reduced, its, capa its capacity is reduced by around 25% because the level of the reservoir just isn't enough to generate uh, its full power generation capacity. So it's uh, about three quarters of its generating capacity, if I have that right. I don't want to think it's only at 25% of its capacity because that would be uh, pretty rough. But uh, by uh, July or August, um, that's the, the critical point of these higher powers that it can get low enough that uh, the plants actually can't generate any electricity. They're just taken offline. So in California, uh, there's one particular uh, plant um, which uh, is the Edward Hyatt power plant. It opened in 1967. It's never been shut down. And this is the first year that it runs the risk of being shut down. So it's when it's operating at full capacity, it supplies power to 800,000 homes. So that's less than a million. But I don't know, a million people, that's a substantial number of people, I suppose, to be affected by loss of power. Um, you know, one in 40 million or one in 50 million people is still, you know, 2% of the population is out of power. Um, so if it's at 700 feet above sea level for its uh, reservoir level, uh, that's not 700 feet high of water, but where it is in elevation, it's... It, adds up to 700 feet um, but it needs to drop 60 feet in its reservoir and the dam won't be able to the plant won't be able to operate so it has a 60 foot margin right now in its reservoir before it's uh, taken offline and they expect it to be that level level by august but if it's a worse year than that could be much sooner than august uh Yeah, so the, where you had that dam supplying 800,000 
the Hoover Dam supplies 8 million, so a 25% reduction is 2 million people are, aren't being supplied electricity that normally would be. Um, now, that's sort of the hydropower thing. Now, the other thing that is the segue is that hydropower is usually pretty cheap. It's some, one of the cheapest forms of energy you have out there. Um, so when it's taken offline, it actually causes... Um, the cost of electricity to go up so in texas for instance energy costs have gone up to two thousand dollars um per is it megawatt what's two thousand dollars um just need to find this here let's see if i can do a search for two thousand pretty sure it's in there Ooh, it's not in there. Okay, I guess I didn't find it relevant. But uh, they have uh, bulk purchasing for rates in Texas through ERCOT. But um, it's, yeah, $2,000 a mega, uh, per megawatt hour. That's a s increase of 6,000% uh, with this heat wave. So energy prices have skyrocketed. Now, this hydro power thing actually has a segue into nuclear power. Um, so there's stuff going on in the nuclear power, the power world. This year is the biggest year for nuclear power uh, deaccessioning or like uh, shutdown of nuclear power plants. Um, throughout the last, I don't know, 60 years, You've seen maybe 40 power plants go offline. Um, hopefully I have that number right. Yeah. But uh, but the power plants that are being shut down this year, I think it's only two this year, but that's a lot for one year, I guess. Um, and that's like totally taken offline, not being started up again uh, with those plants. Um, but what you often find is that they allow new plants to be started up when they shut down the old plants. But um, the, there's a segue also that over the next 10 years, there's development of uh, some pretty groundbreaking new nuclear technologies. Um, and cr this is maybe cringeworthy for all you uh, Democrat multi-billionaire uh, people, but uh, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett actually are for the Western grid. They're actually pretty big champions for bringing in uh, their new technologies, um, which are based upon um, natrium power, which I think is just a salt reactor essentially. Um, there's a bunch of new salt reactors that are deemed a lot safer because when they shut down, they just sort of turn off they don't cause a nuclear meltdown which generally isn't good but so that's through terra power and uh pacifica power or is it uh, uh yeah i know the gates one is uh terra power but i'm not sure i think the buffett one is pacifica power i'm really not sure but um they want to start that up by 2030 and there's some others also, such as in Washington State, the X Energy's XE100 reactor. And these should all bring new power, nuclear power generation back online that's much safer than the old stuff. Um, now, with that in mind, it ties back into the drought situation again, where I don't know if they've corrected this issue yet because I'm not a nuclear scientist, but um, they need to cool the for the water for they need hot like it's called hot water but it's or heavy water but um they cool down the reactors with water and the problem is is that if you run out of water you can't cool down the reactors um which is bad um yeah there's it's nuclear science so i'm not even going to try to go into it but if uh reactor rods become exposed and stuff it's just bad news um like with what's happening in china apparently um 
the, the enrichment level of oxygen to uranium can cause off gassing and they have like a gas leak or something like that so they need to introduce hydrogen into their uh, reactor system to balance it out again or something but it's um, this French company that runs a plan is trying to get the US Department of Energy to let them know how to fix the problem so um, it's like it's it's a big issue but um, China is having energy issues it's rationing energy and then you have the states where it's also uh, they're needing to reduce the use because they don't have enough capacity and nuclear power plants are being taken offline um, in the states also so there was a I don't know if it was a fire at a plant in Texas um, yeah I'm, I'm not sure what it's called or something point um, let's see if I can find the name of that place again I'm not familiar with everything happening in nuclear power in the states but yeah it's something point but uh, I think there was a fire at it or something, but it was taken offline and it was a little unexpected. And uh, that's part of what caused the spike in uh, Texas was this nuclear power plant being offline. I think that plant alone was a couple percent of, yeah, so they lost generation of 12.2 gigawatts. Um, that's enough for 2.4 million homes are down for repairs right now. And this is in the backdrop of the uh, Texas grid issues in the winter from the cold weather, but uh, they're down 2.4 million homes. And this is part of what the spike's going on. But the $2,000 is still far down from the peak of $9,000 per megawatt that occurred in uh, the winter storm. But if this power issue continues they're already saying that like st stuff that was supposed to shut down like gas plants and, and stuff they're actually keeping them online or bringing the plants back up because um they're actually they're have overwhelming demand and demand's expected to continue to increase um by 18 percent by 2030 throughout the world and by 2050 up close to 40 percent increase in electrical demand so this is not that it's going down and while this is happening they're trying to get carbon zero so that means all the carbon producing gas and coal plants um they want to take all those offline which basically goes back to these safe nuclear reactors russia for instance um over the next five or so years may take them 10 years um, have a new nuclear complex um, that uses a lead-cooled breast OD300 uh, fast neutron reactor. And this is the same sort of technology that they had in the 1970s. They didn't, I guess, develop it for whatever reason. Um, but it massively increases the energy yield from uranium and uh, utilizes nuclear byproducts. And it allows nuclear programs to be extended for thousands of years um, and gets rid of the nuclear uh, waste. Now, this is on the Lear attack subs uh, called the Alphas um, that were in the 1970s uh, that used titanium lead bismuth. Um, so I think these bismuth reactors um, and salt fluoride uh, reactors um they're seen as the new reactors um that they're starting to bring out and at the same time the largest magnet ever uh as far as i'm aware is being shipped to france right now for the fission reactor that they're bringing online now this is cold fusion at its finest so this fission reactor is supposed to be able to create somewhat clean energy uh you basically dump tons of money and or tons of energy into this reaction process that uses this magnet that's like waste the 280,000 times stronger than the earth's magnetic field <laughs> like wait i'm not sure what that's going to do to compasses and stuff or the magnetic field itself that's shifting right now but um 
it's 208,000 times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field, and it's supposed to be used in this fission reaction process that basically cold fusions energy. I'm not sure if they just suck up the energy, like all the free energy, they're just going to suck it up, and there's your fission. Um, <laughs> Tesla would do it, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on with that, but on the same note, um, Utah's legislator of public utilities, they did this special, it's a committee and they did this, um, study to ask the question, you know, um, what's going to happen, uh, this summer with our electricity, will our grid fail? And they were like, well, they may actually have blackouts in Utah also during uh, extreme heat, which is happening and may happen much worse. And Nevada and Arizona, in addition to Utah, don't have what's called a spinning reserve capacity, um, which means that they, like, you know, I have a battery. Their battery only lasts so long. Well, if people use their AC... Um, then that battery is going to get sucked dry and people will suffer blackouts because they can't keep it going. There's only so much power that they can supply at any given point for a certain period of time. Speaking of batteries, though, California, back in the winter, they were looking at this situation and they're like, we will get all the power companies to put batteries out to... Um, ensure that if the grid fails in certain points, these battery backouts, because fires put power lines on fire and they disconnect certain parts of the grid. So they have these battery systems that are going to supply energy in the case of a line break or outage of a plant. But uh, they won't be online fully until August. And that's basically the end of the peak. And that's after the point that the Hoover Dam is supposed to fail or this 13% uh, generation is supposed to fail. Um, if weather conditions don't turn into a monsoon. Um, but they have some of this capacity out. I don't know where exactly. But I think they have 600 megawatts out of 1.8 gigawatts that they're trying to get out there in battery capacity um but gavin newsom's also declared an emergency on this energy issue and is getting those states that don't have enough power that will they'll, they'll fail if <laughs> they have the reports and they're like we're actually gonna fail um i'm not sure if they got them from nevada and arizona but apparently those states don't have the ability to supply their energy in the case of a heat wave. Um, but California has apparently gotten more supply from them. Whether they can deliver it or not, I don't know. But um, yeah, so it's the, the, to wrap this up at the nearly 20-minute mark, it's, it's not looking good. Um, power plants have already shut down, and it's June. And these issues are uh, really just saying that the grid is not in good a good shape. Um, with these wildfires, they can take out plants, they can take out lines, low water levels, they can take out um, hydropower generation, and because of the need to cool reactors or cool have water to cool stuff with the low water levels or increased temperature of the water puts it outside the regulatory uh, ranges of the nuclear energy commission uh, they may just let them do it anyway but then you might have that chinese situation where depending on the mixtures um, you may actually have more radioactive gassing events um, you know it's probably unique to this reactor design but um, all in all, it's, you know, they're probably going to have some level of power. I think a total grid failure is uh, hard to believe. Like, it probably have to be a really bad heat wave where this these water conditions would have to, like, it would have to be a really bad summer, I think, for the grid to fail. But it's not that it can't happen. It's, the grid is, like, coughing and sputtering, but... Um, I think it's really hard to imagine the grid actually running out of gas and uh, uh, these 
extra reserves and the battery banks that are being put out are uh, going to ease the problem. And I think that this decade will probably be the last decade of major energy issues before a lot of the solutions start being implemented on clean energy that uh, is safe and readily available.